So last night, the finale for the Book of Boba Fett season one or series premiered on Disney Plus. So today, I thought it was time for me to stop and review the Book of Boba Fett season one. I think it is. I think it's season one. Please know that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion. My name is S Dub Nation. If you are new to the channel and you are free to comment down below your very own opinion on the finale of Book of Boba Fett as a whole, as well as the series. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also that Star Wars playlist. That link is up above. Also, please note that this video is split into two halves. The first half is an episode breakdown. It's going to be a nice rant about the finale. And then we're going to move into the review in the latter half of the video where I'm just going to talk about the entire season the entire show as a whole with that being said guys let's get right into the rant so we kick off the episode with boba fett and fennec and mando at the ruins boba suggests that they should go to his palace but the Moss Espa Vespa suggests that they should stay in the ruins. I think that was pretty dumb. I thought, hey, listen, if Boba Fett says let's go to his palace, we'll have much more security there. There's much more of a fortress there. Let's go there. They have the advantage. It's their terrain. But no, the Moss Espa Vespas decided, you know what? Let's stay in the ruins so we can help the people. Even though their whole character is that they steal from these same people they so desperately want to save right now. We then meet up with Cad Bane, meeting up with Mok Shai and the rest of the Pike Syndicate executives. It comes out that the Tuscans weren't actually killed by the bikers. Grogu then arrived the Pelimoto's garage, indicating that, yes, he chose the foundling shirt over the lightsaber. It kind of undercuts the dramatics of the second season though. We then get a stare down conversation with Cad Bane and Boba Fett. And here we learn that Cobb is, air quotation marks, dead. And that, you know, the, the stare down that we had in the last episode was a little bit more Western-like than this stare down that we have. Cat Bane then tells Boba about the Tuscans and how they were killed by the head of the Pike Syndicate. And then after Cad leaves, the locals begin attacking the Moss Espa Vespas. Why is everybody out in the open? I have no idea it's it's so dumb for me i that's not a western like everybody's just out in the open the mas espas vespas they're just sitting there out in the open what's his name the the, the chewbacca looking character this guy yeah he, he he's just out in the open with his gun just easy i mean i think i think he should have been like a sniper or something like that i don't know they should have had snipers put in place they should have had people underneath grounds like you know vietnam war they should have done something like that if you wanted to go for like an actual war type feel or just like an actual western type feel then they would be hiding instead of being out in the open that's so dumb and boba fett being smart enough fennec being the strategic person that she is and also mandalorian the mandalorian mando being as smart as he is they should have at least suggested, hey, you guys might want to take some cover instead of being out in the open. So then a shootout occurs. Fennec then saves the Mos Espa Vespas and then speeds off. We'll get into that later. And then the Pike Syndicate corners Mando and Boba. We have a nice call back to this is the way. They're talking about honor. They're talking about how Mando buys into the, you know, the Mandalorian creed and Boba Fett don't. It's a nice little back and forth. Then it all comes down to Mandalorian saying, we must die an honorable death. This is the way. I thought that was pretty cool. That's when I started getting ramped up about this episode. But then there, there was this guy that's with them uh, that they were holding hostage. And he turns out to be a negotiator. He tries to negotiate with the Pike Syndicate. But then, finally, some action. So then after that, he, like, he gets interrupted. And then we get this cool shot of Mando and Boba Fett flying in their jetpacks above shooting the syndicate from below. And I thought all of that was pretty good. Like I said, finally, some action. Finally, some action. When things got low and dicey, the people of Freetown joined the fight. What I mean by low and dicey is the fact that Mando and Boba Fett, they were getting a little bit overpowered. So reinforcements joined in. The Mos Espa Vespas and then their whole little team, their whole group, they joined in on the fight as well. Like I said, W reinforcements. So then the team is now cornered by turrets with very hard to penetrate force fields. So then 
Boba, so then as the whole team gets together, even the Chewbacca character, they get together. They're all under attack. The people of Freetown, they're all under attack by these turrets. So then Boba Fett and Mandalorian, they devise of a plan. Boba Fett flies away, and Mandalorian's job is to keep the turret distracted. So he keeps one of the turrets distracted. He meets back up with Peli, who has Grogu with her. And I just thought that I was a wonderful reunion. I mean, as someone who who really loved the dynamic between Mandalorian and Grogu and thought that was the strongest part of season two, man, it, it felt so, it, it was like a father reuniting with his son again. So like Grogu just jumping into the arms of Mando and, and just hugging him. I thought that was so sweet. It was done perfectly well. So then actually I should go back when the turrets were here and before Boba Fett flew off Mando actually pulls out the dark saber like he he's had the dark saber this entire time he's been on this show and when he pulls out the dark saber I thought that was just so cool I I always love seeing Mandalorian well the Mandalorian with the dark saber in his hand even though we've only seen him with it a couple of times the times that we've seen him with it in his hands he just looks so cool so he pulls it out and he tries to break through the force field. And, you know, kinetic weapons are not going to break that. And then things get dicey for Mandalorian. The suspense is ramping up. Boba Fett comes out of nowhere with the Rancor and he's riding it. It's like the Rancor from uh, three episodes ago. Like, that's so that was cool to me. I thought, okay, yeah. Seeing Boba Fett ride that Rancor, that was pretty cool. Grogu then uses the force on the turret to save Mando. And the Rancor goes all out Kong on the rest of the tour it's still with Boba Fett riding him we get a last showdown between Cad and Boba though I thought he got punked like I really thought that he got punked because Cad was whooping his behind but maybe it's because of their history and maybe Cad knows a lot of Boba Fett's moves but Boba Fett did end up killing Cad in the end so he stabs him through the chest the Rancor then rampages in Mos Espa and you know, in old Kong fashion, he's climbing a bar buildings. He's doing the King Kong thing. You know, we all know what the King Kong thing is. So then to defeat him, Grogu puts him to sleep by using the force. And then he curls up next to the Rancor and, you know, he goes to sleep too. It was so cute. After this, all of the trouble has settled. Fennec then kills the Pike Syndicate executives in an awesome way. Like she just hangs one guy. I thought that whole entire sequence was just amazing. That was the highlight of this finale. Boba Fett and Fennec then walk through the town as their locals look onto them with the respect. And Boba Fett says this dumb line, I don't think we're cut out for this. Dude, what was the show about? Like, literally, like, okay, this point right here. They're walking through the city, and people are looking at them with respect. Okay, I get it. We just saved you guys' butts. But it, did did he deserve their respect? Like, I, I don't... It's so the show didn't know what it wasn't. The show didn't know what it wanted to be, and it just ended up. You know, I I don't care. Like at this point, I don't care. So when he says something like, "I don't think we're made for this," you know, what's the show? Then what was the show? What was what was the whole show about? I'm sorry, I'm stuttering, but like, Jesus Christ, what was the whole show about? If you're not cut out for this, come on. <laughs> After this, we get a nice scene with Mando and Grogu. You know, Grogu, he's playing with Mando. Oh, it was so cute. And then, bam, we get a post credit scene. The Marshal is alive, and he's in the bank, the tank. Bam, episode ends. So that was our episode walkthrough of the Book of Boba Fett finale. I think it was a shorter one than usual, uh, than what I usually do. I, I just wanted to make it a little bit more short, a little bit more condensed, because I want to get straight to the review as possible for the rest of the season. But my thoughts on the finale is that it was a solid episode. It wasn't the worst of the, the season or, or series. And I definitely think that it has some really high highs and some really low lows and just solidified to me that this show is very frustrating and what it really wanted to be in the end. But with that being said, comment down below, what did you think of the finale? And let's get right into the review. And the good thing that comes to mind here is that it's another Star Wars show on Disney+. Plus. I fairly really like the Star Wars stuff that they're doing on Disney+. Plus. Boba Fett's history with the Tusken Raiders is actually pretty cool. I think after he makes it out of the Sarlat Pit and then he meets with the Tusken Raiders, I think showing him having to earn the respect of them to become more comfortable with them works. And it's a nice juxtaposition to what he's trying to do in the present as in rule with respect instead of fear like Jabba the Hutt did. And I think for Boba's character, that could have worked. 
I also really do like the fact that we have a lot of Godfather vibes here. I've never seen The Godfather. Just pointed out there, I've never seen The Godfather, but I can't agree that from what I've seen of The Godfather, I can't agree that this show, when it gets down to it, it does have a little bit of The Godfather vibes, and I thought the trailers kind of represented that a little bit. And also the Crime Underground promos, they promoted this show as a Crime Underground series, and you get hints of that. But it's not a crime underground story. It's not a crime underworld, you know, show. It's not like that. The Spice characters worked. I really did like Luke. Seeing Luke again, I, I cheered. That was fun for me. Mando's back. I think that's all great. You bring in Mandalorian. That's how you do an episode of Book of Boba Fett. Actually, in fact, the episodes not focusing on Boba Fett were the best part of the show to me. So... That brings us to the bad. Bad thing that comes to mind here is that this show is so, so, so frustrating. I didn't watch these episodes week to week. Actually, I watched the premiere when it came out. The night it came out, I watched the premiere. I thought, okay, it's fine enough. His origin, or not his origin, but like the flashbacks of him and the Tuscan Raiders. I think that's all pretty good. I'm not eager to watch the next episode, though. Okay, flash forward four weeks later a whole month later and now the mandalorian shows up and i don't know what's going on people telling me there's power rangers in the show is i don't know what's going on now they've got another chewbacca in there what, what is going on and then i watched the the whole entire season up to the mandalorian episode and then i followed it kind of week to week and then i rewatched the season before i did this review and before i watched the finale and it's so frustrating. The overall show is just frustrating. Like, what was the point of this show? The story wasn't clear, and when it tried, it got to the point where they just gave up on Boba Fett's character. For some reason, the show wasn't interested in telling a present-day Boba Fett story. And when they tried with the flashbacks, they killed the muscle that could have worked as backup and made everything come full circle for the arc of, of the Boba Fett show if they wanted to go that route in the finale. I think it would have been great if the Tusken Raiders lived and then they showed up as backup to Boba Fett in the finale. I think that would have had a little bit more oomph because we just spent an entire season or an entire show showing flashbacks of their relationship, of Boba's relationship with the Tusken Raiders, what he learned from them, what they learned from him. I thought all of that could have worked. Instead, the show completely makes Boba Fett someone who asks questions instead of being the cool, excuse my language, badass from the second season of The Mandalorian. Like, literally, in the second season of The Mandalorian, dude was mowing down stormtroopers like, I, like, like it was nothing. In this, he's literally asking, like, these, these street rats, the Mos Espas Vespas, which is, I, I don't even know what these characters were. Okay, let's talk about the Mos Espa Vespas real quick. I probably already talked about them in rant, but let's talk about the Mos Espa Vespas right quick. Number one, okay, there are, they, these are criminals, right? These are people that cybernetically enhance their bodies so then they can steal from the Mos Espa people and then turns around in the finale and says, this is our people, this is our home, we have to save them. What are you talking about? You don't care about these people. Like, there's, you don't care about these people at all. Why? Because you steal from them anyway. It, I don't I don't get it. I, I just don't get it. it it's like the Mos Espa Vespas were so weird. And that Boba Fett just listens to everything that they said. He listened to them being street rats. And he's like, okay, well, it looks like you guys are going to work for me. And then literally in the finale... He's like, okay, let's go to my fortress. Let's go to my palace that has that I know the terrain. It has a lot of security. We can do a lot of things there. And then one of the Mos Espa Vespas, she just literally tells him. This happens in the finale. She literally tells him, no, we're staying here. Boba Fett would have pulled out his gun and aimed it right at her skull and said, you want to rethink that? Boba Fett, that's what the Boba Fett character is. That's what he is. There's no, that's just what he is. The show constantly forgot it was a Boba Fett show. And the sequence is that it was a Boba Fett show. And when they tried to go more into the underworld crime stuff, it just couldn't give off that vibe because of the many changes to Boba Fett's character. 
as well as the fact that they just wasn't interested in telling that story. And it shows. In conclusion, Book of Boba Fett was a show I was looking forward to. I mean, you could check out that tier ranking up above. I was definitely looking forward to the Book of Boba Fett. After The Mandalorian Season 2, I was like, okay, now I want to see this underground uh, crime thriller. I want to see Boba Fett rise to power. I thought that was pretty. I, I thought that could be pretty cool. The concept was all there. The ideas were all there. The groundwork was all there. The intrigue was there. The the execution though, the frustrating, jumbled execution of this show left me wondering and asking, why? What was the point of this show? If it was good, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, it's like me hating on the show. I'm not really hating on the show as much. I'm just saying if it was if 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 it was great, if the show was good to great, I wouldn't be having these issues because of the fact that they executed it all right. Some of the episodes are solid. The Luke episode, solid. Mandalorian episode, solid. The finale is solid. The lead up to that was just weird. It, it was weird to me. The Book of Boba Fett is a C and a 6 out of 10 for me. And I would say for Star Wars fans, we will find it, like including myself, we will find it a little bit enjoyable, but also close to mid. And that's where I'm at on the line. I'm saying this show is very mid. If you're not a Star Wars fan, this may work for you. And on the other end, it may not work for you. But for Star Wars fans, I feel like we're falling into the bad to mid category. All right, guys, that is it for the review slash rant. Please know that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion. You are free to comment down below. What did you think of the Book of Boba Fett series as a whole as well as the finale? With that being said, please don't forget to check out that Twitter. It's going to pop up on your screen right now. And also that Star Wars playlist. That link is in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Peace.